watch this video before traveling to Europe in your camper van. This week we'll be breaking down all of our top tips when it comes to getting your camper van onto European soil. We'll be diving into absolutely everything you've got to do to get there. What you legally have to do, how to actually get there in the first place, what you need to do to get your animals there, breaking down the infamous 90 day Shenyan rule, and also diving into what we did to travel for three months at the start of this year all around Europe. We started our van build and van life journey back in 2022 when we self-converted this Fiat Ducato into our tiny home on wheels and we absolutely adore it. So much so that at the start of the year we decided to quit our jobs and just set off to Europe but there was a massive learning curve in knowing exactly what we needed to do to get there in the first place so today's video we're gonna break that down for you guys. So first things first you've got to know that your van is fit to actually travel in Europe. Now I'll get the obvious stuff out of the way first it's got to have an MOT if your van's from the UK it's got to have insurance and you need to have a V5 registered in your name and address. Now quickly on the insurance you need to go through your insurance policy and make sure that you're allowed to actually travel around Europe and then on a similar subject to the insurance it's a really good idea to have European breakdown cover. You can get dedicated European breakdown cover, but we found it a little bit easier and also a little bit cheaper to get it mixed in with our general UK breakdown cover. Shop around, go with the company you're comfortable with, but just make sure that you're covered in Europe. So now you've checked your insurance and your breakdown policy, it's time to start thinking about where you're gonna be actually driving when you get to Europe. Now most people come over the tunnel or the ferry into France, so it's a really good idea to get a vignette for your vehicle. Now, rules are changing constantly with vignettes, but if you plan on traveling to any of the big cities, Paris, Bordeaux, you're gonna need a vignette on your vehicle. Now, after you've got the Crit Air sticker and you know your number, you can go online and check which cities you're able to travel to. And also, a side note with vignettes, there are loads of sites which are basically scam sites which will upsell you the Crit Air sticker. The Crit Air sticker is only a few pounds and it's shipped directly from France. So don't go paying 15, 20 quid for vignette stickers. You don't need to. Legally, you have to drive with Eurolight stickers on your vehicle. They're essentially these little stickers that you put on your headlights to deflect the beam to the right side of the road when you're in Europe. But I will say they're a little bit of a pain to fit, so set aside at least half an hour to figure out the placement of the stickers on your vehicle. But obviously, when you get back to the UK, make sure you take them off. At the moment, you need a high-vis vest in arm's reach in the cab for every passenger you're carrying and you also need to display a UK sticker on your van. Some people will tell you you need to carry breathalyzers but they're only a recommendation. They are no longer law to be carried in the vehicle. What we normally do is carry a little bag with everything we'd normally travel in the van with in the UK such as your warning triangle, your high-vis vests, a flashlight in an emergency and also a first aid kit. So it's a really good idea for you guys to do the same. So the vehicle is ready to travel to Europe. Now you need to make sure that the people are ready to. This goes without saying, but obviously you need a valid passport to travel. If you're in the UK, you need a passport with at least six months left on it upon your return. But a safe bet is if you have a blue passport, you're probably gonna be fine to travel. Now, just like the European breakdown cover, it's a really good idea to get some form of travel insurance for your trip. Again, there are loads of companies out there that will provide you travel insurance, all coming with different clauses in their policies and also coming at very different prices. Looking back, I think we paid about a hundred pounds for the two of us to be insured for the full three month trip. And it covered us for a ridiculous amount of money if we ever needed to use any of the medical facilities in whatever country we were in. It also covered our gadgets like our phones, laptops, camera, drone, it covered everything. So we had complete peace of mind that if we got anything lost or damaged, then we'd be able to claim on the insurance and get all that money back. And now way more important than the van and the people that are going to Europe, you have gotta make sure that if you're taking animals, they're fit to travel as well. Now this is a minefield of a subject to go into. If you do want a dedicated video just on taking pets over to Europe, I'm more than happy to do it. So let me know down in the comments. And while you're floating around the comments, you should probably drop the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. But yes, taking animals is a little bit of a headache. We've got a little dog and we found it a little bit stressful when planning on taking her over to do our three month trip. But there are two main ways you can take your animals. The first and more expensive being animal health certificates and the second easier and cheaper option is pet passports. Animal health certificates are done by your vet and your dog has to be over 12 weeks old because it needs a rabies vaccination. And it needs to be in a good, healthy condition to actually travel in Europe. Now, depending on where you go to get your certificate done, it can range between 100 and 200 pounds. So it's definitely not cheap to get your animal out there. But what I will say is, once you're out there, you've got the possibility 
of getting your animal a European pet passport. Now, luckily enough, our dog came with a European pet passport because she's a rescue dog from Romania, but her rabies actually lapsed in the time she's been in the UK. So what we had to do is buy an animal health certificate to get her out the first time, and then when we were in Southern Spain, we got her registered with a vet, got her rabies topped up by European vet. We could then travel with our dog just on the pet passport. It's a little bit of a minefield, but if you do want a dedicated video, let me know down in the comments. Right, that's you, your van and your animals all sorted and ready to go to Europe. Now you've got to get there. We've traveled to Europe on two separate occasions and both times we've traveled a different way. The first time we took the Eurotunnel, the second time we took the ferry. Both have their pros and cons, but personally, we prefer the Eurotunnel because it's a shorter crossing, you can stay in your vehicle, and your animal doesn't have to be left alone for the crossing. But prices vary dramatically. This time round, on our 12-day trip, we found that the Eurotunnel was a lot more expensive than the ferry. You've got different routes to bear in mind. Do you want to go from Dover to Calais? Do you want to go from New Haven to Dieppe? The choice is completely yours, and whatever you decide to do is going to come at different price ranges and also different crossing times. It's a really good idea to shop around and think about exactly how you want to get to to and from Europe. So now you've figured out how you get into Europe. Once you're there, you've got to make sure your devices are going to work for the duration of your trip. Now these days, it's not as easy to get data connection in Europe as it was previously. Most network providers come with pretty hefty data caps and usage policies when it comes to using your phone abroad. So whatever your network, make sure you check the fine print to see exactly how much data you can use per month when you're traveling in Europe. Another really good option is the countries you're traveling to. You can pick up local SIMs. The only disadvantage of that is when you're in these countries, if you choose to go to another country, that SIM is not likely to work. So it's a little bit of head work in terms of getting a SIM every time you enter a new country. But if you want to go down that route, then it's absolutely fine. But we didn't because we've got Wi-Fi. We went for the Netgear Nighthawk M1 and it's worked out absolutely great. But you can have the best gear in the world. If you don't have a decent SIM to go in it, then it's useless. Connect Please are basically a one-stop shop when it comes to connectivity abroad. They offer several different packages at various price points, so the chances are you're going to find one that fits into your budget. We went for the Total Euro package, which basically covers every country that we decided to travel in. When you go onto the Connect Please website, you can actually go through and check that the countries you're visiting are inside that package that you've decided to go for. And being as this one SIM that we've got in a Wi-Fi box covers all the countries we wanted to travel to, we didn't then have to go and get a local sim every country we travel to totally stress-free and it's pretty much plug and play you put it in the box and you forget about it you're connected and you've got wi-fi in your camper van i mean it doesn't really get much easier than that does it honestly we can't recommend them enough so if you do want to pick up a connect please sim yourself or a portable wi-fi box go down in the description i'll leave a link and lastly their country list is always growing so chances are if they don't cover the country you want to travel to now they will do in the future but with that being said and done, it's time to move on to something that I think a lot of people forget about when traveling in a camper van, especially in Europe. You need to be packing appropriately for each country you wanna visit. Now we were away for three months at the start of the year, January, obviously winter, temperatures weren't the best and we were met with horrible weather in France. We were in courts, we had loads of layers on and the weather was shocking. As soon as we got down to southern Portugal area, the weather started to improve. So out came the vests, the shorts, the sunglasses, and the coats were left in our boot. But then after we traveled Portugal, Spain, and Italy, we went into Switzerland, which was absolutely freezing. It was snowing, it was freezing cold. Our diesel heater was pretty much on 24 seven, and the coats came back out, as did all the layers. I really can't stress this enough. Do not pack for a one climate trip, because the chances are, if you're doing an extended road trip, you're gonna see all weathers and all temperatures. And on the topic of traveling to loads of different countries in an extended road trip, don't underestimate drive times in Europe. Now, if you're from the UK, you'll be used to doing a couple of hours here and there to get from A to B, and nothing is really that far away. But in Europe, the drive times can be pretty substantial. Now, we didn't really think too much into the drive times. We just skimmed over it and thought it would be fine we quickly realized that is not the case. So for our trip at the start of the year, our first stop in France was actually Mont Saint-Michel. We came over on the Eurotunnel into Calais. So when we actually got into France, we realized we had a five and a half hour drive down to Mont Saint-Michel, which absolutely killed us. And we suffered really bad burnout with the drive-in basically two or three days into the trip. Don't underestimate the drive times and just plan ahead because the last thing you want is to be constantly chasing your tail and feel like all you're doing is driving and you're not actually seeing anything or living van life 
in Europe, which is what you set out to do in the first place. But Europe is massive, so just be prepared to do a lot of driving and don't let it overwhelm you. And that leads me nicely on to my next point. Have a rough plan of where you want to visit. We didn't really plan too much of our trip. We knew what countries we wanted to visit and we had a few markers along the way of things we had to see. Apart from that, we were just going with the flow. And I think that worked really well for us, but it is a really good idea to have a rough plan of your trip, the places you want to visit, just so you don't get overwhelmed with all the choice when you're in Europe. So it feels like you're sticking to something and you're not just traveling aimlessly. Now moving on to the point that you've all been waiting for, and it's the biggest talking point when it comes to traveling Europe in a van. The 90 day rule. It's very easy to get caught out by the 90 day rule because a lot of people don't realize what that actually means. Now, there's a misconception within the community of travel and van life, especially for newcomers, that you can be in Europe for 90 days leave Europe for a day or two, come back, and that's your time reset. But that is honestly not how it works. You need to look at the 90 day rule more like a 180 day rule. There's a 180 day period and you can only travel in Europe for 90 of those days. And it is also a roll in 180 days. So if you went into Europe on the 1st of January, that is the start of your 180 days. So if you did a week here and there, as long as you're not in Europe for more than 90 days, on a 180 day period from the first time you entered Europe, then you're absolutely fine. But like I said, it's a rolling period. So as time goes on, days will start to drop off, weeks will start to drop off, and your time will gradually reset. If you're doing the full 90 days in one go, exactly how we did it, then that 90 days is gonna be eaten up with the entire trip. So after you leave Europe, you've gotta wait 90 days to come back to Europe again. Otherwise, you risk getting some pretty hefty fines, and even in some cases I've read, get bans from Europe absolutely mental. The 90 day rule can be a little bit difficult to get your head around. There are certain ways to get around it and I hate saying it but it's been branded the Schengen Shuffle. There are certain countries around Europe that you can enter which aren't in the Schengen zone. So when you're in those countries you are not accruing days on your 90 day limit. Countries like Turkey, Morocco are not in the Schengen zone. So when you decide to do your road trip, make sure you know exactly what countries are in and not in the Schengen zone to avoid being caught out by this ridiculous rule. A lot of people like to do the Schengen shuffle by spending three months in Europe and then going to Turkey for three months or going to Morocco for three months. And then once you've spent three months outside of the EU, you can come back into the Schengen zone and your 90 days have been reset. And that is a way that you can travel pretty much endlessly, avoiding the whole 90 day rule thing. It's a minefield, I hate it, everyone hates it, but we've just gotta live with it, I guess. And the last point to mention is just have an absolutely fabulous time. Traveling Europe is the best thing we have ever done. And traveling in a camper van is unlike anything we've ever done before. It is absolutely top tier. You get to immerse yourself in all these countries, listen to all these different languages, see how people really live and you get to go off the beaten track which is one of the best things we love about van life. We honestly could spend years in Europe traveling if money was no object and we'd quite happily do so. There is really so much to see and do you can completely immerse yourself and just live life how it's supposed to be lived. Traveling Europe for three months at the start of the year gave us a massive sense of freedom. It was really amazing to just escape the rat race I guess really and just escape the mundane and escape the norm that we are all so used to. We literally were the writers of our own destiny, as cringy as that sounds. We were just able to take it as it comes and travel to the places that we wouldn't normally get to travel to if we weren't in a van. You will see so much, you will do so much, and you will come back a completely changed person because it really does open your mind to just a whole new world of possibilities and just beautiful landscapes, quiet nights sat in the van, and listening to the waves it is honestly amazing so although there's so many logistical things that you've got to worry about the end goal is traveling in Europe and it is honestly the best thing we've ever done so there we go that is our van life tips and trips in terms of traveling in Europe we wanted to do this video because we realized that we were in a completely different headspace in terms of our knowledge before we did the trip and we know there are thousands of people out there who could potentially benefit from all this hindsight that we've accumulated over the last year. If you want any clarification or a bit more information on anything I've mentioned in this video, drop a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We have got a lot of knowledge between us of traveling in individual countries in Europe, and we plan on doing a little mini series 
of certain things to watch out for and certain things that you just have to see when you're traveling in Europe, especially in the more common countries like France, Portugal and Spain. But we did do 10 countries at the start of the year, so there'll be a lot of tips covering all those countries in the videos to come. But this video was kind of aimed towards those people who are yet to travel Europe or maybe have traveled Europe, but still don't really understand how to get there safely and legally. It seems travel these days is just getting more and more complicated and you're expected to jump through more and more hoops as the years go on. But just allow yourself enough time to get all this logistical stuff done and out the way and then forget about it and enjoy your amazing van life trip in Europe. And for those of you that are traveling Europe in the next couple of months, we are so jealous and we wish we were coming with you because at the moment we're back in the UK and we're working, building up that pot ready to do it all again next year. But that's it from us. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you did like it, drop the video a like. And if you've got any questions or comments about anything I've discussed in this video or anything you've seen on our channel previously, let me know down in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But we hope you have an absolutely amazing time traveling in Europe, wherever it may take you, in whatever vehicle you may take it in. Stay tuned for the next one. But until then, we'll catch you next time.